What's up, everybody? My name is Kason. Welcome back to the WDL War of the Visions Draft League Week 5. Week 5 is really, really exciting for me because this is the final week before our supplemental draft. For those of you guys that don't know, every single one of our teams currently has 9 units on their roster, spread among different tiers, different costs for the units. And after week 5, we are having one additional round of draft based on the standings, and every single team is going to be able to draft one one unit of any cost. So essentially one more flex unit to add to their team. Uh, this can be useful for some teams to get like a low cost unit to help make certain team comps work. This could be useful for other teams to maybe get something to counter an elemental weakness. It could be something to use to just bolster things that you already do well whatever you want to use it for. But essentially we're going to have one more round of drafting after this week. And week five is important because it's based off the standings after this week. Uh, that being said, I'm really, really excited for this week. I'm so sorry that I didn't get my video out last week. I've just had an incredible, incredibly busy schedule uh, over the last couple weeks. I mean, honestly, this entire summer has been that way. Uh, but now that we're in the fall and this last week I was in a wedding, I had a bunch of things going on. So thank you very much for being patient. Thank you for waiting uh, for me. But I don't want to wait, make you wait any longer. So let's get into these matches. So right out of the gate, the first matchup that we have here is my own team, Soldier First Class, versus Turambar's team, the Fire Ferrets. Now, uh, my team has not been doing so hot in the standings recently. I'm currently tied for last, I believe, with four points. Current record sitting at one win, two full series losses, and one mitigated loss. Turambar has been running the table. He is 4-0. He hasn't lost yet. Um, he has lost one single match, uh, but he hasn't lost a series yet. So he's got a really, really impressive team. Um, so I'm up against it this week. Uh, I would really love to get a win here. Uh, if I get a loss, not too surprising because it's Turambar, but I'm really hoping to be the first team to upset him this week, and we'll see how this goes. So looking at the matchup, no clear elemental advantages except for one very specific unit. And that unit would be Lorenzo. To be completely honest, I have never, ever in my life fought against a Lorenzo. So I'm not fully sure what to expect. I know that he does kind of work well against Charlotte, however. Uh, he has Dispel to protect and shell. And his main damage is Pierce damage, which is actually Charlotte's biggest weakness. Uh, so it's very, very possible that he brings that out. To be completely honest, the team that I expect to see from Turambar is all physical. And the reason I think that is because I don't think he will run magic knowing that I have Naya. And Charlotte also is a magic tank. So match one, I kind of expect to see Joker, Engelbert, Lorenzo. Um, I think it gives him a good bit of tankiness. I think that works well against my team because uh, a lot of times if I'm bringing my own tank, my offensive power might not be too crazy. And Engelbert works well against physical units. Well, you're going to see on my team, I really don't have a lot of magic power unless I'm bringing like Gargus or something like that. So that is the team I expect from him. And we'll go to this next screen to show you the team that I decided to try for this week. So you guys are going to see in just a second, the map that we are on this week is Coastline 2. And I'll be completely honest, I didn't put a ton of prep time uh, into my team for this week. However, just looking at the map, I thought that one thing that my team might have as a strength uh, over Turambar's team was range. The way that this map works is you're either down on the ground on the beach, which is basically like height of one, or you can be way up on the mountain, which is like height of six. So I figured bringing somebody like Nivlu and Cloud and being able to just hopefully rain down damage from the top um, I thought could work really really well for me and I felt like if he starts all the way down on the beach I think my chances of winning are very very high the other thought process that I had in this matchup was that Nivlu especially I thought could be really really useful the reason I thought that is like I said I thought he would bring Engelbert here uh, Engelbert is a obviously a tank but he doesn't have innate hate unless you're running Vow of Love or something like that he actually has to get his uh, immortal spirit or like courage buff on in order to get hate well dispel spread can get rid of that hate so i felt like there was a decent chance if nivlu could land a dispel spread on engelbert get rid of his hate and then cloud uh, is able to sharpshoot or triple slash or something one of the backline units and get rid of them i think that gives me a much much 
healthier chance of winning. The other unit that I decided to bring in here was Helena. Main reason was uh, she's my only time mage other than Nivlu. And I just felt like running haste and quicken, allowing some of my other units to get more attacks off could basically help me get a ton of damage off before he reaches me. And on his team, he has a ton of firepower, uh, but unless he brings Velus, he doesn't have sustain. So my thought is I'm going to try and get damage off before he gets to me, and we'll see how this match actually plays out. So coming into the match here, you're going to notice he has a magic stat of 2066. So initially looking at this, I'm thinking that I might have it wrong and then he might be bringing Garvel, but let's see what he actually does bring out this week. So, uh, match number one, you're going to see he brings out the Velus for the very first time, also brings Lorenzo for the very first time. So, the biggest difference here was I thought he'd bring Joker instead of Velus, but you're going to see what my team is designed to do. So, Nivlu comes up on the top, gets the aim fire buff off uh, to get attack range up on the team. Keenblade's going to go up just to get me... Uh, basically allow me to get more turns off fast right in the beginning. I want to get my buffs off before the fight starts. And to me, whether or not I win this fight kind of comes down to whether I get bells off uh, on my team before the fight starts. I feel like if I can get that, I have a good chance of winning. So the haste goes off on Cloud. Helena should be channeling a quicken here. Unfortunately for me, Turnbar does start up on the mountain, not on the beach like I hoped he would. This means that uh, Nivlu uses Barrier Obliterator instead of using Bells. However, I do get a good chunk of damage off on Engelbert right out of the gate. Quicken goes off on Cloud, but unfortunately for me, Snow Healing actually goes off first, or else Cloud would have been able to walk up and proc the Courage on Engelbert. Unfortunately, that cast time on Velus is just too damn quick. So, Velus is going to walk forward, get another heal going. Engelbert is stepping forward, and to me, this looks very, very bad for me initially. Uh, because he has sustain, which I think kind of beats the team comp that I have. But we'll see if my team can, can pull out anything here. So Nivlu, 32 AP, walks up. Sidewinder, 5200 damage on the Vela. So actually kills his support. So now I'm thinking I might actually have a chance in this fight. Quicken comes off. Cloud doesn't have a ton of AP, though. Just auto attacks the Engelbert. I do get a reflex, uh, which could be really, really huge here. The retribution drain goes off, which means he does not get a heal. Helen is going to channel something here, and uh, Lorenzo walks up, Armor Piercer, good damage onto both, about 3400 onto both. Nivlu is going to auto-attack the Engelbert, and the Haste goes on to Cloud. So at this point, uh, the unfortunate thing about Helena is that with Time Mage sub, she does not have access to heals, so I really don't have sustain. Crucially though, Cloud lives with, with like basically just a teeny bit of HP from Engelbert. Triple Slash goes off, and this should be a Quicken onto him. And now this allows him to chain with himself. So it gets a slash on Engelbert, finally procs that courage. And now Nivlu gets the auto attack on Engelbert. So at this point, it is Lorenzo versus three. Uh, so what is going to happen at this point? Lorenzo has tons of AP, armor piercer, kills two. It is now a 1v1 between Lorenzo and Nivlu. Who's going to win this fight? Barrier Obliterator comes off. And you're going to see Lorenzo is a tanky beast versus lightning. I don't know how much lightning res he had, but it's a lot. Jump comes out. And Lorenzo, the MR unit, pulls off the 3v1 against my team. Um, I will say, after after this match, you know, kind of thinking, like I said, I think if I'm able to get my second buff rotation off, I think I have a legitimate chance in that fight. Given what team he brought versus the team I brought, um, I don't like my, my setup versus that. Velus is the main reason. So, in my opinion, if you're bringing, like, Rangers, who a lot of times don't have the super super high burst damage sustain can be a really good option in beating that because you can just kind of heal through that damage right so seeing the fact that he brought velus i didn't really like the idea of bringing this team in round two at this point i have a couple of options i can bring evade um because i do think that evade probably beats this team he brought right here uh, because I just don't think he has a ton of ways of hitting me. I don't think Lorenzo would be accurate enough. And unless you're building for it, Engelbert shouldn't be uh, accurate enough. That being said, I have a feeling that Turnbar is going to switch it up in some point. So I'm kind of expecting a mix between Lorenzo and Dark in the second match. And you'll see the team that I bring for it. All right, guys, so for match number two against Turambar here, this is the team that I'm running. So first of all, 
um, I'm changing my initial position. So I am running this team down on the ground on the beach rather than up top because this team really isn't meant to, you know, fight from range. They're mainly meant to, I mean, fight somebody on the same level, right? Charlotte doesn't have a bunch of height ranges on her attacks. My main strategy here is I want Charlotte to walk forward while the other two are slightly behind her, get some damage, and just sustain through all the damage that he can bring. My opinion is that if he brings um, Velas, Engelbert, Lorenzo, I think I have an okay chance at it. And if he doesn't bring Velas, I feel like I should be able to sustain through whatever damage that he throws at me. Um, I will uh, say real quick, so I have... Uh, Oberon's TMR here on Charlotte. So essentially my first two turn buffs that I want from Charlotte is to run Glorious Armor and I want to run um, the Oberon TMR. And my thought process is one of two things here. I have a good feeling that he will probably run some sort of haste because I think he will run either Lorenzo and or Velus. And if he does that, Oberon TMR can be very, very effective in limiting the haste that he brings. I'm going to have my own haste because I don't think he's going to be able to get rid of that. Um, and Cloud is going to have to be the main damage dealer in this team. For Naya, um, I will say I have Reflect on her. Um, or you are allowed, like, I guess I should say, you are allowed to turn on or off skills based on the team that you see here. You're going to see um, that I turned Reflect on because he does have a magic stat going into this game. If he was all physical, I would have just returned Reflect off. I did make one mistake going into this fight. I meant to actually turn off the Helena VC ability and turn on Protect. I did not do that, so it's going to kind of change exactly how uh, things play out. But without further ado, let's actually get into the fight and see how it works. All right, guys, so match number two here. He is bringing two dark with Lorenzo. He's bringing Joker, Lorenzo, and Garvel here. So I'm feeling good about the fact that I have Reflect, and if Naya can just sit in the back and heal, I feel like I should have a good chance in this fight. Um, I have double resist here because the pierce resist is good against Lorenzo, and missile resist is good against Joker and Garvel. So that is why I'm running the Nightblade sub. And I'm also running Aurora of Blessings to get Dark Resist up and Slash Resist up, which again, both things are good against Garvel and Joker, and then the Slash is good against Joker. So Turnbar getting his full buff rotation up. Lorenzo, a very good user of Keenblade here. And uh, Garvel is going to get his movement and jump up. It looks like that's what he's channeling. Joker with a lot of uh, defense piercing at this point. But I'm still feeling pretty good about the matchup right now. So Naya is going to channel Reflect here, and... Every single ability that Garvel has, except for his ability, is his limit break is reflectable. So that is why I think this is a really good option versus Garvel. I do notice here that I forgot to turn the Oberon TMR on, uh, which is a mistake by me, and also really unfortunate because he gets the haste off on Joker. This haste would not have worked had I used that TMR, and I accidentally did not turn it on. So uh, Charlotte actually did nothing on turn two, which is really disappointing. Spirit Blaster goes off, gets reflected back, actually does 4,800 damage on the Garvel, so that's huge. As you see, though, I did not turn Protect on by mistake, um, and she uses Shadow Flare. So she walks up, and now she is in some trouble, and I'm just hoping that she doesn't get killed in this AoE. However, Joker has very, very wide ranges. He has Swift Strike, which is going to hit her, and 8,100 damage kills her in one hit. So this is looking grim for me because it's a 2v3, and unfortunately, Naya didn't live. However, Cloud's an animal, and he kills the Garvel. Um, so 2v2 at this point. Lorenzo's going to jump up in the air. Dive of Destruction removes that Protect and Shell, like I said uh, early in the video. Joker's going to go Swift Strike. I need Charlotte to live here. She unfortunately does not, just barely she goes down. If she were to live one more hit, I think that would have helped a lot. Now it's up to Cloud to 3v1, basically, kind of like the term or the Lorenzo did in match one. It's a 1v1 at this point. I need a reflex or something. Speak of the devil. Here comes the reflex. Vertical jump. Cloud dodges it, so it's still not over. He's going to pop the limit break, so how much damage is this going to do Lorenzo? He's tanky against lightning. Only 3k? And he actually gets the Dragon's Blade back on me. 4,300 damage and the heal. Does more work than the Reflex even did. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, I get the lucky counter. And I think he gets an even better end of the deal um, from his own counter. I mean, it's it really didn't matter, right? I basically would have had to probably get two Reflexes and him not get a counter to win that 1v1. 
Moral of the story, I guess, is just Lorenzo is a beast uh, versus Lightning. If you haven't won 20, Lorenzo, go do it. He's a monster. No, seriously. Um, hats off to Turnbar. Really, really good matches. Um, I'm disappointed in myself that I didn't check more thoroughly on some of my ability on offs. I think had I been able to turn protect on and not have that BC ability on on Naya, I think I have a much better chance. Turnbar and I actually ran this fight back one more time right after. Um, I didn't even turn protect on, but I turned the VC buff or the VC ability off and I actually won by like the skin of my teeth. Um, so I think there is a very real chance I could have beat him if I had done things a little differently. Had I ran that Oberon TMR, I never turned that on. I didn't do Naya's abilities on off. So definitely learning some things about my comp and how to double check, triple check every single fight, what abilities you have on and off, because that can absolutely turn the tide of the fight. But yeah, GG to Turnbar. Let's check out these other four matches for this week. All right, guys, so for our second matchup of week five, we've got Dr. Dickhead and the Golgari Swarm versus Jebba and the Sappers. Two teams very, very close together in the standings here, one at five points, one at six points. So a monumental matchup for both teams here. Um, just kind of looking at the teams and kind of what I expect to see. Honestly, the Golgari Swarm run a lot of Mont, Little Leela, and Helena, and I think that's just a team that works really, really well together. Um, looking at Jebba's team, He's bringing a lot of Ravis in a lot of his weeks. I think Ravis is just a good tank, um, more physically based, so maybe not the most effective tank against uh, Dr. Dickhead. However, she can run Charlotte's Shield, uh, which is very, very effective. She can run Immortal Spirit, which is really good. I think she's just an overall good tank. Um, I'm not sure exactly what to expect, though. Honestly, like doc the Doctor could run Evasion. Uh, that's very possible. Looking at guaranteed hits, though, Summer Jaden has a guaranteed hit. Summer Lilith has a guaranteed hit. Uh, Yuna technically has one, even though she's more of a support role. Ibarra does have an increased chance of hitting. Um, I don't know. It'll be interesting. And Ravis can always run Rob, T Rob VC in the sub slot for a guaranteed hit or run Steel Heart. So interesting matchup here. Let's just see what they decide to go with. All right, guys, so match number one here, Dr. Dickhead versus Jebba. Jebba actually running Ibarra, Little Leela, and Oron. So very, very interesting uh, setup for the first fight. I'm thinking that he probably brings Oron because Little Leela is wind, and Oron is slightly better versus magic than he is versus physical. So could be an interesting take here. Helen is going to pop her own TMR, getting a physical and magic shield and the agility up. Uh, a tech that Dr. Dickhead goes with almost every single week, but it's just a really good tech, is running re-rays on Little Leela Halloween. So he's got his tank down by himself, down at the bottom. He's got Mont. Curious um, how this setup works. So it's really nice to have your tank separate from your other teammates to avoid AoE damage. The sweet spot is getting him far enough so that his teammates don't take damage, but not too far away so that your teammates can approach and deal damage. So Helena walks up, level 4 Tarka does a ton, 56-20, so, so much for being good against magic, uh, he took a massive hit there. How Ibarra with the elemental disadvantage, but she's in monster, lightning attack resist down, didn't even crit, still does 6400 damage. Let's see if Oron can get rid of the Mont. Heaven's Fall procs the Courage. So Mont not looking super healthy, but can he kill Oron here? Taunting Blade too. So he actually gains additional hate. Not that he needed it. He's still only at one health at this point. Little Leela, can she kill him? She can, silencing spell. So it is a 2v2 at this point. What can Little Leela do? Walks up. Big old range, takes out the Ibarra, and at this point, this fight is this fight is over. I can't imagine any scenario where Little Leela, uh, maybe Little Leela the Bold, but not regular Little Leela can 1v2. So, a pretty quick fight, honestly. Uh, well played to the Doctor, and we'll see how Jebba can respond in match 2. Okay, match 2 here. So, the same team coming out from the Doctor. The one switch up coming from Jebba here is he subbed out Orin and decided to go for Yuna. Now, this is interesting to me. The one thing I will say is I can understand this if he has hate on little Leela. Otherwise, I'm not entirely sure what Yuna does in this situation, I guess. Um, I mean, she does have re raise in full life, so I guess that it's possible. I mean, Yuna's 1v3'd in situations before, but that, that was a long time ago, I think. Uh, so the position is changed up here from the Doctor. It looks like he swapped. He actually went with his tank up high instead of down low and put the other two down on the beach rather than up high. Stone Throw Mastery, so drops the movement from Ibarra, but shouldn't be too crippling here. Silencing Spell comes up, and I do wonder, 
Um, in this situation, Silencing Spell could be good against the magic damage dealers, but I wonder if Taunting Spell is a better option. Little Leela can normally survive magic damage a, like somewhat well, um, and getting hate up on her I think could be a really good uh, move, especially when you have a big damage dealer like Ibarra. That being said, she drops the Limit Break on Mont and does a ton of damage that that uh, High 3 Kira is not going to do a ton. Yuna gets the re-raise on Ibarra, so that could be pretty massive if Ibarra goes down. And the nice thing about Ibarra is she has magic reflex, so this fight is never over um, as long as uh, Ibarra is still standing. So Little Lila walks up, but she unfortunately cannot reach. I imagine that Ibarra is going to, yes, Ibarra is going to take out Mont. Yuna should go for a heal here. Does she get it off in time is the question. Because Helena is going to go first. Does she go with a arithmetician skill or does she go with a casting time? She goes casting time, so Yuna should get this heal off. Which she does. So, full health. 3v2 at this point. It's looking a lot better for Doctor. Wow, that is a lot of damage, though. Ibarra and Little Leela very low. However, Little Leela has her White Mage skills turned on, so she's going for full life instead of going for the double kill. And what is Ibarra going to do? Goes for the Counterman Slash, kills the Little Leela. However, Little Leela has re raise. But this is definitely looking better for Jebba than it did round one. Can Yuna get another heal off? That's the question. Height base dark, so she takes out little Leela, but not the worst thing for Jebba, because Ibarra is still alive, and this heal should go off. That's huge. Can Ibarra kill these two? No, actually, ha Halloween little Leela actually goes before her. That's, uh, that's interesting. Okay, so Yuna goes next. What is she going to do at this point? She goes for sweet support, so she buffs the agility up. Does that matter in the turnover? It, that actually made Ibarra hop in turnover turn order, excuse me, over Helena. Helena was going to go first, and now Ibarra steps in front of her. So, this is looking pretty good for Jebba. Never mind. Uh, she gets obliterated by Helena, but she has re-raise. Man, holy cow. So, this unit is actually putting in work, though, with these heals, but Helena goes again. Holy cow, she is speedy as hell, especially considering um, that Ibarra got that agility buff. However, I think that wears off when you die. So that makes sense. Counterman Slash comes through. Can't kill her. She needs to Magic Reflex on this turn or she will lose. She needs a Magic Reflex. as she does not get it. Helena, wow, pops off. Kills all three units. Very, very good showcase from Black Rose Helena. Uh, just like back in the day when she came out and was the mo most OP unit in the game. She looked pretty damn OP right there. So props to Dr. Dickhead. Congratulations on your win. Uh, well played to Jebba as well. And let's check out our third matchup of the week. All right, guys. Third matchup out of five. This week we have Jesus LBL versus Spike. Um, so Spike with a win could tie Jesus in the standings potentially. Jesus with a win uh, could really, really pull away in terms of the standings uh, up near that top part of the ladder there. So interesting matchup here. Uh, let's take a look. So first of all, Jesus has an evasion angle on his team. However, I know personally Spike has some friggin' accuracy on his team. Not only does Noctis have guaranteed hits, but Luel is incredibly accurate. So I don't know that evasion is the angle here from Jesus. Zeus. I expect to see a dark team. Um, and actually, at this point, Final Fantasy Tactics has their EXs. So could this be the first time we get to see Gafgarian? That could be very, very exciting. Uh, Whisper has been a very good unit for Jesus up to this point, undefeated actually, with a perfect 4-0 record. However, uh, last week, Jesus did pull out the Ramza. Um, so does he go the Ramza, uh, El Sorel, maybe Fina angle, or does he go with the full Dark Squad? We will see. In terms of Spike, has an incredible MR tank with Nasha. Um, could, could go Nasha McLeod Satterley. Could also go like Nasha Noctis Luel. I think either one of those team top, team comps could work. Very unlikely in my opinion that we see the Celis just because Jesus really doesn't have a whole lot of magic damage on his team. He's much more physically based in my opinion. And even the magic damage that he does have is like Starlight Elena. Uh, that's really not a lot of reflectable things. So I think it's very unlikely we so see Celeste or Raldor or something like that. I think it's probably one of the two teams that I said before. Uh, but yeah, let's take a look and see how this match plays out. All right, guys, match number one here between Spike and Jesus. Jesus running that full dark team like I talked about. Gafgarian has a Maneater buff here that he's going to pop. This is one of the only units in the game with a Maneater buff, so I think that's very, very cool. And Little Lila the Bolds uh, buff here with Slash Tech Piercing Rate 
is just so incredibly synergistic with this team. Uh, that's why I think this team is so damn scary. So Noctis uh, going to pop a buff here, going to get his follow-up attack. And Luel has a nice uh, earth attack up and unit attack resist buff, which I like. And Whisper going to get Protect Shell and Regen, very similar to Charlotte's buff that she runs. Immortal Spirit going to come up from Nasha. Is she going to be in range of this Dark Team before she gets her shield on? That's the question. So Abyssal Blade Dark comes out 7,600 damage from the Gafgarian. Holy shit. Little Leela, Little Leela the Bold follows it up with almost 9k. And Nasha, thank God she has Courage, is just barely hanging on here. Fleet of Foot coming up from Luel, but I don't know if they're going to be able to save this Nasha. I think Whisper's going to walk up and be able to take her out here. So she's going to step forward, Taunting Spell. So she gathers hate, too. So she should have, I think, like 17 hate or something ridiculous right now. So it is not looking very good for Spike's team. Holy cow, Gafgarian basically one-shots the Noctis, 9480. Gafgarian is just popping off. Little Leela the Bold coming out, 9200 damage, and that was an absolute stomp. A perfect 100-0 victory uh, from Jesus. Very curious to see what adjustments Spike can make here after this match because that one was not close at all. Let's see what happens in match two. All right, guys, match number two here between Spike and Jesus. It looks like the exact same team comps coming through. So I'm a little surprised by that uh, in terms of Spike uh, because he got absolutely destroyed in match one. But I'm curious to see if just some positioning can change the outcome in this fight. So very similar buffs uh, as Jesus had in turn one. Uh, Gafgarian and Little Lilo using the exact same moves, same with Whisper. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, and see how Spike can adjust here. So he's starting up on the platform here. I think the biggest difference that I can see here is that uh, Nasha seems to be, I think, a little further back, uh, probably so that she can get that shield buff off also um, before the fight starts. One uh, thing to point out here is that Little Lilo, the Bold, and Gafgarian, as strong as they are, I don't believe have a way to break barriers. So if she does get her barrier on, that can be a decent way uh, to mitigate some of their damage. So Whisper, what is she going to do on her turn two? She does nothing. She walks forward. Uh, so it looks like the tanks are just going to kind of walk at each other here. And fortunately for Spike, it looks like uh, Noctis and Luel are going to get their turn two buffs off, which is nice. And gets an agility buff up. Okay. Not sure what's happening here. Okay, Iron Body Stance. Defense up, coming up. And so buffs and buffs and buffs and buffs. It's going to take a little while for this team to be able to hit each other. The nice thing here for Spike is that it looks like he might have an angle, especially with Nasha walking towards Whisper here. He might have a way to hit the Dark Team without the Dark Team hitting them. We'll see what happens, though. We'll see if they're in range. Skyhammer comes through, one-shots the Gafgarian, so gets his revenge on the Gafgarian after Gafgarian one-shot knocked his last fight. They're one-shotting each other in this one, so whoever hits first seems to be the one that wins that 1v1. And Little Lila the Bold going to channel her Limit Break. Shadow in the Moonlight comes off. Very cool Limit Break. How much damage does she do? 3674, so not a ton. Uh, that barrier that Nasha... Uh, put up seems to be doing a lot of work she took much much less damage than she did in the first fight uh can luel reach the tank or is she hitting little leela here actually noctis hits little leela kundra armager not enough to kill but does proc the heal off of her so that's a good start she can reach the whisper so not a ton of damage on her so the question is can they get through whisper uh in time because little leela has massive aoe's But she can reach Nasha. Graceful Undoing, 3,000 damage. So again, Nasha actually tanking this up pretty well. I'm not sure if there were other adjustments uh, that Spike made or if it's just getting that barrier up. It seems like it has to be more than that. Um, but whatever he made for adjustments, very nice job. Plunge comes through, kills the Whisper. It's a 3v1. So can they kill Jesus right here or does she get to use an AoE? Gets the Guardian Wall up again. Uh, and she kind of steps out of the way, so does her team a favor. Wicked Pummel comes through. Can't even kill the Nasha, actually. So, very, very well tanked by Nasha. I'm I'm actually super impressed, because it is very hard to tank Little Leela. And as hard of a stomp as that first match was, man, it's looking like Spike is returning the favor with a clean 3-0 in the reverse fashion of what he took. And, of course, Little Leela the Bold sitting there with 1 HP. Spike decided, you know what? 
have Bahamut. Let's uh, let's summon Bahamut to take care of him. Very, very cool in animation. Little Lila goes down, and wow, 1-1. One one. So a 3-0 in Jesus' favor in the first match, 3-0 in Spike's favor in the second match. Who's going to win match three? Let's find out. All right, so same team comps as the first two matches. So both Spike and Jesus say, you know what? I trust my team. I think it's all about the positioning. Which team can get the better positioning in this match? We will find out. Gaff we know that Gafgarian and Noctis can basically one-shot each other. So who gets the chance uh, to kill the other one first? We will see. It looks like the just about the same positioning. I don't think this is any different from Spike from last time, as far as I'm aware. But actually, Whisper getting in range very, very quickly, landing the taunting spell and get that hate up. I don't think Noctis is... Or Noctis. Wow, Luella is not in range to hit her. I am shocked. I think it's because you probably need to jump to there to get down, like, further down the mountain. Uh, so I think good for Spike that she couldn't reach, or else Gafgarian would walk up and hit her. Shadow Blade comes up. Gets his slash attack Pierce resist up, so he'll be stronger for the next uh, attack, but only did 3k. How much damage is Little Leela going to do here? Because I don't think that Nasha got her shield up. Did she get that off? Not that I remember. I don't think so, considering Little Leela just did 8k. I could be wrong, but I didn't notice she, that she got her shield up. I don't think she did. I think she just got a mortal spirit. Skyhammer comes out, and it looks like Jesus has an adjustment as well, because uh, Noctis does not kill him in one hit this time. Whisper coming forward, got Protection Shell, but unfortunately she's right in the middle of the team. And Law of Geoabsorption comes out, kills the Gavgarian, heals her to full. Not that she really needed a heal, uh, but it works. And I think Nasha's going to run Esuna, but she is not long for this world, so it's not going to matter. She goes down, Graceful Undoing comes up. Uh, gets rid of the buffs on Spike's team. Looks like Leela's out of AP, though. Skyhammer comes through, gets some AoE damage. That should proc Little Leela's heal, I believe. Does she not? Oh, did she, did she not use that skill? Does she not have her heal? Oh, man. Gift of Knowledge comes up. This might kill Little Leela unless she has Courage on. I thought she had her heal on, but maybe she doesn't. She doesn't. This fight went too quickly. She actually never used her buffs. I didn't even realize that at the start. Whisper has to win a 1v2. Man, it's not looking good for her. I think this might be Spike's match to win. Spike, power of the true king, because Noctis cannot reach. He is not in range. There are some dead bodies in the way that he cannot get to her. Will this end up mattering? I don't know. I don't know that Whisper has the AP. She doesn't. She has four. So what is she going to do? She doesn't even buff. She literally just stands there. Uh, so everybody just can't hit each other. Okay, Noctis has enough AP. Uses plunge. Gets down on her level. And I imagine that Luel is going to take care of this right here. Oh, no, she did it to him again. The double Bahamut to end the game. She did it to him last time. She summons Bahamut again for the finishing blow. I mean, this ma this animation is cool as shit, though, so I really can't be mad. I do feel a little bad for Jesus. But wow, Spike pulling off the reverse sweep, getting absolutely clobbered in the first match, wins match two and match three. Very well played to both of these guys. Some really cool adjustments uh, from both of them. And I'm excited to see what the fourth match brings us. All right, guys, matchup number four, Sand Rooster versus Surf Taco. One team at six points, one team at seven. Very tight in the standings right here. Let's take a look at what we've got. So first thing, elementally, we do have a little rock, paper, scissors going here. Sand Rooster has lightning, which beats water. Water beats fire and fire beats ice. They have kind of this like zigzag elemental feature here. I do wonder if Surf Taco says, screw it, I don't want to play the elemental matchup and just goes with something like Jaden. The thing is with this map, Jaden, kind of like I was saying in my first match with Nivlu and Cloud, Jaden could be really, really successful in this matchup because he can get up on that perch, that height of six, and just rain down damage from really far away. Um, Surf Taco also has Phoebe who can quicken Jaden. So Jaden can just spray over and over again, especially if he's able to get bells off early. So would not be shocked at all to see that. Also wouldn't be surprised to see, um, I can't remember if RNA and Victoria have high jump. I feel like they might. If that's the case, I wouldn't be shocked if he runs those just because they have good movement on the map. But I think he'd be a little scared to run into Sand Rooster's fire team. Uh, so I don't know if we'll see that. In terms of Sand Rooster... 
I mean, the elemental matchup, the safe way to go about it is lightning, because if he's going into water, he just wins that, and he's he doesn't have any earth to worry about. So wouldn't be shocked to see some sort of lightning in here, whether it is Esther, Skahal, or Silma. Actually hasn't played Esther yet to the point to this point in the season, uh, but it'll be an interesting matchup, and let's see what they decided to go with. All right, guys, matchup number one. So we do see some lightning from Sanderster, Esther for the very first time, along with Skahal and Murmur. Uh, I am a huge Skahal fan, so I love it anytime Sanderster brings him out. Personally, wish he was on my team, but unfortunately couldn't get him. So Surf Taco does run the Jaden Phoebe. Not surprising at all considering this map. I think Jaden is just so effective from this height range. He should just be able to basically sit up here this whole time. So what does... Uh, what does Sand Rooster, excuse me, have as an answer for that? We will see. So it gets the haste onto Jaden. So I imagine she's going to run haste and quicken here. Bolt Barrage. So Murmur actually being able to use the Orlando uh, TMR. Very, very cool tech there to get the barrier on. So he moves up. He is ready to go. He has tons of AP on and Phoebe's about to quicken him. However, Esther does have bells online. Can he? Can she get through and carve up this Warrior of Light? Skahal actually channeling. I imagine this is Thundaga Disposer here. Drill shot coming through. 5,300 damage, but it is on the Murmur. So if you're going to hit somebody in terms of Sand Rooster, he's probably happy with that. 6k damage on a Warrior of Light is very, very respectable. Unfortunately, Mur Murmur goes down. He was probably hoping to live that hit just to be able to survive one more time. Um, but if Esther can get rid of Warrior of Light here, this is not so bad. Stormbrand, 7,700 damage. Yeah, absolutely. So now it is a 2v2. It is Phoebe and Jaden versus Skahal and Esther. So Golden Magishot, what kind of damage? Oh my goodness, almost 10k comes out. 9k, I think, came out. Killed Skahal in one hit. And Phoebe back here, quickening is just brutal. So Jaden jamming thrust onto the Esther. That's big uh, because the biggest thing about Esther is that she has a lot of resistances to things like slash or missile or pierce, but she doesn't have magic resist. So running the red mage sub, very smart move by Surf Taco. However, Esther goes again, Stormbrand. Oh my God. Jaden lives with 358 HP and kills the Esther on the next turn. That Esther almost turned that fight. That was looking really, really grim for Sand Rooster and Esther almost kills them. Wow, that was nuts. I am very curious to see what Sand Rooster changes up for match two. Man, when they deleted Skahal, I thought that was over. Uh, but Esther going twice in a row, that was actually really, really surprising to me because I thought Jaden had haste on. Uh, but either way, well played. Very, very close matchup. Hopefully match two is just as close. We'll see what happens. Okay, guys, match number two here. So Sand Rooster changing it up a little bit, not bringing the Esther. I will say, I feel like Esther actually performed really, really well last match. So maybe a little surprised, but then again, it's like, what do you change? I think the only change you could have made is run the same thing and just have Esther like up on the top terrain, maybe uh, so that she could get to Jaden quicker. But I don't know if that would have worked. Who knows? Anyway, Sand Rooster putting his faith in his mages because uh, he's had a lot of success with them so far. So we'll see what he can do. Warrior of Light going to get that hate up and walk forward. And what's going to happen? So anti-magic wall comes up. Magic shield should be pretty effective versus the Jaden, I imagine. Although I think he does have a... I feel like he has a barrier break. Golden magic shot. Did that kill? No, it didn't. Skull, oh my god, Skahal barely lives. Just barely. That could be huge, though, if he can walk up and do damage to Warrior of Light. Phoebe going to channel Quicken, and, and man, this Phoebe is just carrying for Surf Taco. Getting his team so many turns. This is it. Rotary magic cannon, a three-hitter. Oh man, that was a lot of damage. And Silma is down in one hit. This is looking bad unless Summer Ketone can get up top and hit them. But I, yeah, she's in range to hit Warrior of Light. So that's looking rough. So Skahal needs to kill him like this turn guaranteed. And I think Sand Rooster still needs to pull some shenanigans. Flare comes out instead of Thundaga Disposer. Yeah, it's not going to be enough. I imagine this Quicken's going to come out and Jaden should be able to delete them. Debilitating encounter. Oh my god. Warrior of Light lives with 135 HP. That actually could have been could have been a big deal. That could have killed Warrior of Light. And yeah, he didn't have enough AP for the Magiblast Plus. So he would have only been able to kill one. So then the question is like, could Skahal kill them in one hit? Or could kill Jaden in one hit? It's possible. Jaden does or uh, Skahal does a lot of damage. 
either way uh yeah he needed like 200 da more damage from that debilitating counter to even have a chance well played to surf tackle though that first match was crazy good and uh yeah really really exciting match let's check out our very final one for week five all right, guys, final matchup of week five here between Unhindered and the Perfect Storm versus Mage and Exxon and Wonder Shoe Puffs. We have another little elemental kind of rock, paper, scissors going on here. So and Unhindered has wind and fire and Mage and X has earth and ice. So wind beats earth, uh, but loses to ice. Ice beats wind, but loses to fire. So interesting little rock, paper, scissors here. Also, the thing that to point out and less uh he's running a ton of accuracy on his fire team i think it probably loses to evasion so it almost has a perfect like loop to the elemental advantage here between unhindered and mage and x so it'll be really really interesting to see what they pull out um that being said if he runs evasion i imagine somebody like lucia is just going to shred them so it'll be really really interesting let's see what they pull out Okay, guys, before we get into this final matchup, I just want to give you a warning. This first match here might be a little choppy. Um, for whatever reason, this match was very, very laggy. So I'm going to try and do my best to shoutcast it and cut the kind of dry spots out where nothing's happening. So the music in the background might be kind of weird. If this is a little choppy, I do apologize. But let's check out the first match between Unhindered and Machinex. All right, so we have Rain, Regalia, Glacella, and Zazan versus Ketone, Eliza, and Curry. So very interesting to see uh, what the uh, the deal is with these two teams, both running mixed elements, and we'll see how that goes. All right, so Ketone walking down here, popping King's Command. That is Elda's TMR buff. Eliza going forward, and she is going to pop Inherited Bewitching Art. So very interesting. So getting that evasion up. Uh, running a mixed element evasion team is a very, very interesting tech from Mage and X. Rain going to pop the Joom TMR and get defense and spirit up. Locks TMR coming up from Curry. So yeah, very, very interesting. Evasion setup between Eliza and Curry. I did not expect that. I actually do not know their inherent evasion numbers. Obviously, ketones, excuse me, are very, very high. Uh, but curious to see if they can dodge some of these attacks. So Astral Guard coming out from Rain gets the hate buff up. And Ketone's going to pop Utsusemi Shadow, get the resists up and the evasion. What can Eliza do on this turn? I have to imagine she's in range. She is. Looks like she's going to pop the Limit Break, Cage of Thorns. What kind of damage can this do to Rain? Only 28-19. Rain uh, can actually get really, really high ice resist, so not a shock that it doesn't do a ton of damage. However, Regalia Glacial is very, very far in the back. Rain is far forward, so it's going to take a little while for her to go do damage. However, Zazan has tons of movement, so what can he do? Nothing. I am wrong. He walks forward and does nothing. Okay, so Curry goes off Frostmon Barrage. He gets the Frostbite on Zazan, it looks like. I think it procced on Rain as well. Oh, so Ketone is going to go forward. Drain Force does 6347 to Rain. Some very, very healthy damage. However, Regalia Glacella does have White Mage sub. Can she get a heal off on her tank here? And Rain, that is not good. She, he walks forward and does nothing, which means he is not able to hit uh, Ketone on that turn. I don't know if he was even in range for the other guys, but he couldn't hit Ketone at all. Can Glacella, is she going to do damage or is she going to heal the team? That's the question. If she can get a massive heal off, this matchup is not over. She walks forward and does... Oh, she is charging. I thought she was doing nothing, but she is channeling. It looks like probably a heal. Can Zazan hit? Does he have Steel steel Heart on? Okay, so un uh, Unhindered Zazan goes. Steel Heart lands it on the Ketone. So that could be pretty huge. If Curry doesn't kill these guys here and Glaciella gets a heal off, this could be massive. However, is he going to get, rain get rid of Rain first? I imagine he is. Frostmaw Barrage comes out, kills the rain, does not kill the Zazan crucially. Does this heal still hit Zazan? It does. So even though he's not the tankiest in the world, he's full. And this is a 3v2, but Ketone is charmed. So it's not necessarily a true 3v2. And so we've seen some charm shenanigans pull some crazy stuff in this series before uh, between Jebba and Jesus earlier in the season. So agility down coming from Eliza. So he clearly has that thornlit piece of equipment on her. It's a really, really cool tech. I love that piece of equipment. 
So Glacial is going to walk forward. It looks like probably channel another heal on Zazan from the looks of it. Does he go for another Steel Heart or can he hit somebody from here? That is the question. Okay, so Zazan's going to go. It gets reflexed. Unlucky. Can't tell if he would have hit him or not because I know he does have, have some evasion going. Uh, but the fact that he at least attempted to swing at him means he at least had a chance to hit. Unfortunately, gets reflexed. Um, Eliza's going to go next. What can she do to the Glacella? I'm not sure if she can reach or not. All right, so Eliza's going to go. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Ketone goes. Actually pops the Dark Odin summon. Kills uh, Curry and poisons the Eliza. So can Machen X's Ketone take out his own team? That looks like the win condition for Unhindered. Uh, I'm <laughs> very curious. Ketone is actually going again because she's so damn speedy. Yeah, Drain Force comes out, almost kills Eliza, and she should die to the poison the next turn if she can't kill Glacella. She can't. The poison ticks, and it kills her. Oh my god, if Charm isn't the most overpowered status effect, I don't know what is. Does Glacella have Raze? That's the question. She No, she goes for Grace of Eternal Friendship. I wondered if she had Raze, because that could be interesting, bringing back Rain. A lot of actions left. The question is, can she hit ketone does she have the accuracy to do it because nobody has had the accuracy yet ketone's gonna walk forward drain force 5700 damage it's not gonna matter if she could have hit him anyway ketone gets the kill ketone popped off basically got rid of all of mage and x's team and all of unhindered's team she just did so much work in that fight again uh, thanks for bearing with me on that fight. I'm sorry if it was a little skippy in post-edit. Uh, there were a lot of blank spots in that fight. I tried to cut them out as best I can. But let's check out match two, which should be way less laggy. All right, guys, round two between Machen X and Unhindered. So Unhindered switching it up, taking out the rain and putting Joom in. That is the one adjustment here. And it looks like Machen X is sticking with the exact same team. Again, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, force your opponent to react to you. So Joom going to get Protect, Shell, and Hate Up. A very nice starting buff for her. Rally Magic coming out from Glacella. And I do wonder, um, I think the biggest adjustment here is that Joom has guaranteed hit where uh, Rain does not. And I have to imagine that Unhindered probably brought more accuracy than last time. I think the Zazan was a good pick because, again, just like last time, if he can land a Steel Heart, that can be game-changing. That one ability almost made that an actual fight where it should have not really been close to start. So, Joom walking up, Storm and Ren does more than half the amount of damage, more than half her health to Ketone, so that is huge. Um, if she can do another one of those to her, that could be big. However, can she survive the ice unit's damage? We'll see how well she can tank it. She tanked the curry pretty well. Uh, can she tank Eliza, though? She's much more of a tank killer. 7,600 damage is a ton. How much damage, how much movement does he have? Plenty. Murderous Blade, though. Man, this team is very dodgy from HNX. I'm very impressed. Uh, either that or Unhindered just has, like, no accuracy. But with Zazan missing... This is looking rough for Unhindered. Can he hit anyone? He is channeling, so he has a chance. Grand Explosion misses both units. Holy cow. This is looking brutal for Unhindered at this point. He doesn't seem to have the accuracy to win this, I think. And this is looking like it's probably going to be a clean 3v1 unless Glacella can pull off something crazy. But I imagine a Drain Force. Yep, 56.99 takes her out. And that might be a perfect 100% health to zero matchup. GG Machen X, very, very well played. Did not expect at all the evasion team uh, with the Curry and Eliza. Uh, very, very surprised, but it worked very, very well, and I'm impressed. So anyway, guys, thank you for watching the matches. Let's check out the standings and the stats after week five. All right, guys. So again, like I said in the beginning of the video, now that week five is over, we are going to have a supplemental draft, which is one more round of drafting for all of our teams. I am going to make a video just solely on that. It probably won't be super long, uh, but I want to do it justice and I want to make it its, its own thing. So that will be coming out probably in a couple days uh, this week. And uh, you can look forward to that to see who else we are adding to our teams to kind of spice things up on this second half run of our league. So anyway, to take a look at some of 
of the statistics of the leaders after the fifth week, we have a new kill leader, or rather a tie for, for kill leader. Joker and Garvel are not new to this list at all, but Black Robed Witch Helena is new to the list. She only had six kills going into this week. She got four new ones. She is tied at 10 kills along with Joker and Garvel. Astrius uh, has been on this list for a while too. Nine kills. Ibarra with nine. Little Lila the Bold and Cloud both at eight. Terra with seven. Ramza and Starlight Elena with six kills. As for the assist leaders, I believe we have a new leader after this week. It is Phoebe with 18 assists. She absolutely popped off this week, was kind of the MVP there for Serve Taco, just really uh, allowing Jaden to just go on and on and on and on. Rennell with 15 assists, Whisper and Nasha both with 14, Little Leela Halloween at 13, Garvel 12, Joker 11, Curry 11, Mistral and Montleonis at 10. And for KDA leaders, we have another new leader. It's Ketone. Honestly, if she got awarded kills for killing her own team, this would be even higher, but we actually don't award kills for killing your own team. The person that charmed her gets the kill award. So congratulations to Zazan for getting one or two of those there. Uh, but Ketone with a perfect 11 uh, KDA, or not perfect, but an 11 KDA, 6, 1, and 5 is the new leader with Joker and Garvel both dying this week. Joker at 10.5, Astrius and Luel at 10, Garvel 7.33, Ramza and Elsrel at 7, Lorenzo and Sakura a perfect 6 KDA, so they have not died yet, and Ibarra at 6 in 10th. And the most important thing after 5 weeks is the standings of our league. As you can see, Turambar just absolutely running this league so far at a perfect 15 points. Little disappointed I couldn't take a match off him. Really feel like I should have, and I feel like I played that wrong. Hoping, hoping, hoping that I can somehow make it into the playoffs and maybe get a revenge match against him, but we'll, we'll see what happens. It's not looking great for me up to this point in the league. So, uh, Machen X, Jesus LBL, and Surf Taco all at 10 points. Spike at 9. Dr. Dickhead and Sand Rooster, or I'm sorry, Dr. Dickhead at 8. Sand Rooster and Jebba at 6. Me and Unhindered at 4. Now, so you guys know, for our draft uh, coming up right after the week 5, so the video that you will see later this week, it is in reverse order of standings. And the standings that you see on the screen right here are exactly correct, tiebreakers and all. So the tiebreakers going into the playoffs are slightly different than the tiebreakers for the supplemental draft. Because for playoffs, the first tiebreaker is head-to-head -head record. We are not using head-to-head -head record for this draft because not every team has played each other yet. So the tiebreakers we used are total plus minus in your win-loss category. So that essentially means if you like two teams could have 10 points, right? But for example, um, the tiebreaker actually worked out perfectly. Machen X, Jesus, and Surf Taco all have 10 points. However, Machen X in terms of win-loss for games is the most positive out of those three teams because the series he's won, he's won them like 2-0, whereas Jesus won a series 2-1 and Surf Taco won two series at 2-1. So that's kind of where that difference comes in. That's where that tiebreaker is. So if you guys were curious how we decided that, it is based off your total Total games win loss, not just your series win loss. That is the tiebreaker. So, unfortunately, being the worst team in terms of tiebreaker actually gets you a better pick. I um, mean, we decided this at the very beginning of the league that the worst team up to this point should get the first pick because we wanted to try and make it competitive and we wanted to give incentive to those teams who aren't doing quite as well uh, to, you know, hopefully give them that chance to make a push near the end of the season. So, Unhindered will have the very first pick of our supplemental draft i will have the second jebba three sand rooster four dr dickhead five and as follows so hopefully that's clear for you guys thank you guys so 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 much for watching uh full disclosure our round five draft is done and our week six matches are actually done too so i will be recording those shortly and have those out to you within this next week we are taking essentially a buy for ourselves so we are having one week where we're not going to play matches uh, so that I can ke uh, catch up in terms of like, the video schedule. So starting next Wednesday is when we will start playing our week seven matches and the week six video will be out at least by then, if not before, uh, so that you guys can follow along. And yeah, this has been an absolute blast. As always, leave any sort of comments, feedback down below. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button if you're enjoying the content. If you're not enjoying it, well, then get the hell out of here. No, seriously, I love you guys so much. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.